Today we're going to be talking about Microsoft Dynamics 365, specifically about field service functionality, including booking recurrences, invoice setup, work orders, and more. Hello, Dynamics community. I'm Dave from Bond Consulting Services. One of our experts, Kelsey, will be guiding you through field service functions. Let's get started. Welcome to Dynamics 365 Field Service Module. Today, we're going to go over uh, creating a new work order, uh, scheduling that work order, and eventually closing out that work order as well, and everything that goes in between. We'll start off with creating a new work order. So on the left-hand side here in my navigation pane, I went ahead and clicked on the work orders table here. And then I clicked on plus new to create a new work order record. At this point, I can use the work order business process flow at the top of my page to continue to fill out the information necessary for this new work order. So here I can go ahead and fill in the service account. I'm just going to select a sample here. And then I can go ahead and select a work order type. In this example, I'm going to go ahead and say that this is uh, a diagnosis and repair. I can also pick a primary incident type, which we'll just say is an equipment repair in this example. At this point, I can go ahead and click save which will now create my work order record. So we'll give this a moment here to save. Great. So now some things that I kind of want to highlight on the work order record itself. On the left hand side here, we just have some general information about our work order, such as what the work order number is. Um, our service account that we're using here, the billing account, if it's a different billing account, and the overall system status of this work order. In addition, we have a sub status that we can adjust um, per each system status that we get, as well as we have the work order type and the price list uh, for this particular work order. I can go ahead and also show you the timeline section here. This is going to show us a general overview of any system posts, notes with attachments or activities that happen that are related to this work order. Uh, on the right hand side here, we just have some information such as the customer detail um, from the service account that we selected here. So the primary contact information comes across. So on the right hand side here, we have the customer detail. Uh, this information that's being displayed in the customer detail comes from the data that's filled in the service account here on the left hand side. So what we're getting is the primary contact information for this service account, uh, as well as their email and maybe a different phone number if they had one. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the settings area here. In the settings tab or area, um, we have some preferences that we're going to want to fill out here, uh, including the time from and time to promise, as well as all of the different uh, date and time window start and end. So this is going to be the information that we fill in to uh, based off of our clients needs um, based off of their availability. In the preferences section that we're showing here, this is where we fill out the client's availability. Uh, so that includes the time from promise, time to promise, as well as the date, window, start and end, and the time window start and end. So here I'm going ahead and filling out my time from promised and my time to promised here. And then I can also fill in my date window start, which we're going to do the same date. And then the time, which we will do the same timing as above. So from here, I can go ahead and save my record. 
This information entered into the preferences section will be useful for when we are booking our work order. The next thing that I want to take a look at together is the agreement entity or record. So I actually have a record up open in a separate tab here. To provide some background on agreements, agreements are used to store the recurring work or um, invoicing needed between a client and your organization. So currently we are looking at an agreement record that's being used to note the agreement between our organization and this client and the preventative maintenance that needs to be done for this particular client. In this case, uh, we have a booking setup here that dignifies how often we want to generate our work orders, how many days in advance, what their preventative maintenance is for. Um, and so what this is going to do, this agreement booking means that Dynamics 365 field service will automatically create our work orders based off of the information that we've entered into this agreement booking setup. We can also set up different things like generating the actual booking of resources if there is a preferred resource and a preferred start time that we know. And so this agreement would actually set up all of the time preferences information on the work order automatically. Next on the agreement, we'll take a look at the agreement invoice setup. So the agreement invoice setup section is similar to the agreement booking setup section, except instead of generating work orders like the agreement booking setup, we're actually generating the invoices needed for your work orders or for your agreements. So in our agreement invoice setup, we can add specific invoice products that might need to be invoiced um, on a regular basis, such as services or um, maybe using particular inventory products. Additionally, we can click on the invoice recurrence area here where we can identify the uh, recurrence pattern for a work order invoice. So as you can see here, we have a recurrence pattern uh, to generate an invoice monthly on the first day of the month. Um, and we also have the start and end date of our agreement in place as well. So any changes can be made here and you can click OK. And that is our agreement invoice setup. At this point now within our agreement, we can go ahead and activate this agreement. Activating this agreement will start to generate the work orders uh, as scheduled. So going back to our work order record here. On the right hand side, we do have a place where we can enter the agreement information if this is a, a one-off work order that is related to a specific agreement. In this case, we are not working with an agreement on this particular work order. So not every work order will need an agreement attached to it. There are other different related records to this work order, such as a parent work order agreement, which we just went over, an opportunity or a case. So at this point, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the products. So products on the work order, these are physical products that are going to be used on this particular work order. In this instance, we have a non-inventory service tool that's being used for this work order, and the usage of this product is going to be charged to this client. So in order to mark this as used, so next 
we're going to go on to the services tab of the work order. This is going to show us all of the services that are going to be billed to the client and the services that are going to be used for this work order. You can see that the duration, the estimated duration is calculated here as five hours as the resource assigned to this work order uh, continues to work on this work order, they will mark specific products and services from estimated to used to note to the system that these products or services should be billed to the client. Next, we will take a look at the service tasks on this work order. The service tasks here provide a checklist for the resources to complete their work. So you'll see here each item, each service task has its own estimated duration as well as the percentage complete. So as the resource continues to work on this work order, they will mark each one of these tasks as complete as they go along. Something that I wanted to note is that filling in a primary incident type will automatically bring in products, services, and service tasks from the primary incident type that you select. So primary incident types are set up uh, during the beginning of your configuration for Dynamics 365 Field Service. And you attach different products, services, and service tasks to that primary incident type. A primary incident type works as a template for your work order. And depending on what primary incident type you selected, the defaulted products, services, and service tasks will automatically be added to your work order. At this point, I think that we filled out the work order to the best of our abilities, and now we're ready to go ahead and schedule our work order. So something that I wanted to point out was we can change our area here, take a look at our resources area, to view the different resources that we have in our system currently. So I can go ahead and open up one of these active bookable resources here. Bookable resources within Dynamics 365 Field Service are the technicians or engineers that will be going out into the field to complete the work assigned within the work order. Bookable resources can be set up as users, accounts, contacts, or pieces of equipment. You can also assign the time zone for this particular bookable resource that they work in, as well as any primary email information and their home address information. Within the bookable resource record, we can also select the field service tab here to note their hourly rate, what main warehouse they work from, and any kind of special scheduling that we might need for this particular resource. Additionally, there's more information down here below regarding the characteristics and category associations for this particular bookable resource. Some characteristics might include things like being a delivery driver, being an engineer, or working within IT. Some of these other characteristics might include a specific certification that a bookable resource has, as well as what level or rating value is assigned to that characteristic or certification. Category associations of a bookable resource more refer to whatever resource category they might be involved in, such as a specific job title. 
For example, this bookable resource, Ricky Baker, has the resource category of business analyst. We're gonna click on the resource scheduling optimization tab next. This is just an option of whether or not we want to optimize the schedule for this particular bookable resource. This usually will be defaulted to no, but we like to default it to yes uh, when we're trying to utilize the Dynamics 365 field service resource scheduling optimization functionality. On the scheduling tab, this is where we can identify where this bookable resource is going to be starting their workday from. In this particular example, the start location and end location are the organizational unit addresses. From here, that means that this bookable resource is going to be starting at their offices or the headquarters. We can change this so that they're location agnostic or they can get started from their own home address as well. On the work hours tab, this is where we can identify the work hours for this particular bookable resource. We can change the work hours for this bookable resource by opening up our work hours here. We can edit all events in the series and we can adjust the working hours as needed. So if this bookable resource wasn't working from eight to five p.m. every day of the week, we can change the timing here. We can change the repeat here as well as the days of the week that this particular bookable resource is working. We can also adjust the resources time zone here as well. So based on all of this information on the bookable resources record, Dynamics 365 Field Service is going to use all of this data within this record to find the correct resource to work on our work order that we created a little bit earlier. So now we can go to the service area here and we can go ahead and click on the schedule board. So here we are looking at our schedule board within Dynamics 365 Field Service. At the bottom of my screen here, you'll see some data, some open requirements that are ready to be booked. In this example, I'm gonna go ahead and drag and drop my open requirements for the work order I just created and schedule it for one of my bookable resources based on their availability that I can see on the screen. So on the schedule board here, I have a list of all of my bookable resources here, and I'm looking to schedule my most recent work order to bookable resource Ricky Baker. On this schedule board here, I also have the availability to change the view. I can change it from the hourly view that we're seeing right now. I can change it to this daily view, which changes the format here to days. And I can also change it to weekly or monthly view to get a broader idea of the availability of my resources. At this point, I'm gonna go ahead and change it back to hourly view. So now what I can do here I can zoom in a little bit and I can start to schedule. So now we're ready to schedule our work order that we just created. So at this time, I'm going to go ahead and scroll over to the from and to date of my most recent work order here, which is work order number 45. I'm going to go ahead and scroll over to July 2nd. here and make sure that my bookable resources are 
free and ready to work on this. So I see my resource here, Mr. Ricky Baker. He has availability from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. because it's highlighted here in white. I can go ahead and drag my work order here and I can go ahead and drop it in the allotted time as needed. So now my work order is scheduled. So at this point you can see under open requirements, my work order disappeared from this list. I can click on this record here. I can click on the work order itself and it's gonna open up in a new tab and it's going to show me my work order information. So if I were to come into Dynamics 365 field service as a resource, this is where I can come in and view all of the general information needed to work on this service. Additionally, my system status of my work order has now been changed from open unscheduled to open scheduled because we have a booking for our bookable resource. At this point, I can also move us along from this first stage of our work order to the schedule work order stage. At this point, the work order has been scheduled. We have a bookable resource that should be going in and completing the service tasks on this work order, as well as using whatever products or services were identified from the primary incident type. So at this point, your bookable resource is gonna go into the system, take a look at your work order, click on the service tasks, and they're gonna start to fill out each of these service tasks and complete each one of these service tasks here. As each service task is completed by the bookable resource, they will go ahead and get into the system and they will open up each service task just like this and they will fill out the actual duration that it took them to complete the service tasks any other additional notes that they might want to add can be added at this time. And then they can go ahead and mark their service task as complete and close this record. Please note that all service tasks will need to be marked as complete in order to invoice this work order. Additionally, as each service task is completed, resources will also have to mark which products and services they used during this work order. They can click on the products tab here, and then they can go ahead and open this product. At this point, they can change the line status from estimated to used, and they can also enter the pricing information, such as the quantity and the quantity to bill for this particular line item. When they're finished, they can click Save and Close. And that updates our line status from estimated to used for this product. At this point, we can also mark our services from estimated to used as well. I'm gonna go ahead and click on the Services tab here. And we can go ahead and open up this repair services. And at this point, we can also mark our line status from estimated to used. I'm going to say this is a non taxable repair service. And now I can go to the duration and sale amount. And my duration to bill is already set to five hours here. So no changes need to be made at this time. I can go ahead and save and close. So we'll go ahead and let this load for a second. So now our repair services have been invoiced here. At this point, our work order 
has had our products used, our services used, as well as our service tasks have been completed. At this time, we can move from the scheduled work order stage to the closed work order stage. And we can actually finish this off once we're done. So at this point, we're gonna be ready to close out our work order and create an invoice. So we can click on this stage here for closed work order and we can change our system status from open scheduled to closed posted. And we can click save or finish. So what's happening now in the background is Dynamics 365 Field Service is creating an invoice record for this work order that we just completed. So we can change our area from the service area to the sales area here. We can click on invoices and we should see our new invoice with the same number as our work order. which we can open up and view what's going to be billed to our client. So that concludes a walkthrough of creating a work order, scheduling that work order, and closing out and invoicing that work order within Dynamics 365 Field Service. Thank you, Kelsey, for showcasing the Dynamics 365 solution. And thank you, Dynamics 365 community, for your attention. We hope you enjoy this video. Subscribe to our channel if you want to learn more about utilizing Dynamics 365 to grow your business. Click here for our related videos. Utilize our website down below.